the network. Another interesting article that we've read recently uh, is about the headline is our podcast threatening the growth of the music industry. This was a Rolling Stone article and obviously it's a very strong opinionative statement. Um, it yeah. certainly caught my attention because I wasn't, it's not something I've ever really thought about because yeah. I feel like it's a di- completely different area, even though we're talking about audio. I know Spotify is very heavily invested, but also the headline's a bit misleading because the market shares only, sw- only flipped by like 5% since 2014. So it's gone from, gone down from, uh, it was 20% before. And now music share, music share has gone down to 76%. So that's a 5% decrease for music in favor and a 20% gain for podcasts. Mm. So 5% decrease for music and 20% gain for podcasts in terms of market share. Yeah. That's, that's not too much. So. I, don't, I don't think it's just too much. It's not really too much to shout about. I don't think like obviously podcasts have been getting increasingly popular in the last five years. Yeah. I mean, so, you see that in stats all the time. Something could be the fastest growing, but it's still a very low percent. But just yeah. the perception of that general statement can make it seem larger than it is. But I think there's a lot of merit to that statement, if not for now, but what could possibly be looked at in the future, only because if you look at some of the information, I think they might have actually quoted Daniel Eck, um, but hmm. if they if they didn't quote him, the the founder it was somebody who said it in, within the company just citing the fact that spot podcasts were a fixed cost and we know the issues that it comes with dealing with record labels right yes there's more music yeah. and yes there, the entertainment value and just the looping and the that form of entertainment it brings a, a larger market in its own way for sure but at the same time having to do with variable costs especially for a company that is always searching for profitability and wasn't profitable for years. Technically, are they even profitable now? I, I can't remember. Just about. Yeah. Just about. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. so like when you're talking about as a business and then you look at the fact that there actually are new competitions that actually um, are formidable. Finally, when we look at somebody like TikTok, like the things that TikTok is doing is a, is a legitimate threat right yeah, now 100%. i'm not saying that they're going to take over tomorrow but they are a very legitimate threat and just innovation wise because of they because of the lack of politics and the things they and, and, the, and the way they came into the game they were able to innovate way far past what spotify has done for a good period because yeah. spotify has had so much market share so to hedge some of that bet and say hey yeah we're number one in music right now specifically when we think about streaming only platforms which now like at one at one point that won't really matter streaming only platform no because we're looking at bundles and everything being bundled together so that's less relevant at at some point you have to think about the fact that if we can improve our profitability by focusing on podcasts and we know that tiktok isn't going to look at podcasts right yeah, that's yeah. that's too far outside of mm-hmm. the circle of competence and, and where their focus is so it allows us to hedge our, our bet in that way so i think there's a lot of credence to why we would look at um podcast from a spotify standpoint again one just summarizing as fixed costs and the profitability that could come from that and two just fighting off the uh opposing threats they're also reported in the uh it's a trend that's happening across all ages for podcasts especially like in 13 to 34 year olds they said that it was in 2012 it was 88 percent music consumption 12 percent listening to podcasts but now it's switched shifted to 81 percent and 19 percent so there's been a seven percent shift which i guess it is it is i mean when you when you factor that into hours in minutes that's quite a significant jump yeah the past seven years that that is uh, yeah you're right because kind of like you said i mean pod- podcasts are are longer generally speaking all right and yeah. then two 
So that's more time that the time might be a lot closer. Time listening music versus time on a podcast. Yeah, that, this is a point. This would be interesting to see, wouldn't it? Yeah. Right. So then we even think about that from the fixed cost of podcast, maybe getting even deeper and saying, hey, we not only have this fixed cost, but then you get into the 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 fact that time is spent more time or maybe an equal amount of time is running ads as well running ads right so the amount of attention is still equal it looks different on the surface oh i'm losing here but at the end of the day you're we're talking about economics not the optics right so so now now we are getting into the threat really we are yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. like I, i think that I, that could be something. Of course, we have to spend time, more time looking at that. And I would love to keep talking about this and um, step to date to, to this one specifically. But yeah, I'm, podcasts are definitely going to continue growing in my mind just because that radio thing is not, it's not something that people don't desire. It's just the, what's the word I'm looking for? The format that is mm. dwindled down, right? It doesn't, it doesn't mean that people don't like listening to talk shows or conversations. People love conversations. The, the most profitable parts of radio are typically those morning shows. And it's usually where they put the bigger personalities, right? And those bigger personalities matter because of the conversations they bring, the interest they bring. It's almost, it's, it's based, built off stars in their own right. Right. Yeah. That's the most profitable part of radio. The rest of it is just I'm, I don't even want to say just the most the most profitable part, because, yeah, I don't I'm not super in deep with, uh, you know, the, the, the radio balance sheets. But that's definitely one of the most adored and, and the highest paid people, the high, highest highest paid hosts are the yeah. most people. Yeah. Those, right. For sure. So and which indicates profitability, though, it, it usually alludes towards. So my thing is that means if I'm listening to this morning show more for the morning show, the people than the music in the first place, if the next generation comes, they're not going to not want to listen to people. They, they like talking and conversations that they like. They're going to still desire that. It's just this medium. This medium doesn't make sense to me. I don't, I don't like having to sit through commercials. I don't like not being able to listen on demand when I want to the consumer behavior has changed, but the desire for the product definitely hasn't. So I could see podcasts, you know, growing. Yeah, and bring it to a more micro, le- micro level for like you guys. If you're considering like uh, launching your own podcast, then I definitely think it would be worthwhile. It would just be good to focus on something outside of your music, saying, you know, it's more of a niche, more about you, more of your personality. And Perfect time to, to, to remember that music news that matters is streaming on all platforms. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, we're finally doing it. Yeah. We're, so we're, we're doing it. There's no reason why you guys can't as well, but it's just finally something to talk about that you're passionate about not necessarily like ties into the music that can come later it's just about mm. you know just showing who you are essentially true what? I mean, maybe we don't talk about it enough really we talk about you know advice you know what you can do to promote your music and what you can do on social media but maybe a podcast should have more of like a shine a light shine to it as it were you think so i think so i think i think it's good if we're talking about you know building up your personality on social media this is another great way to do it. And you can talk about something perhaps you wouldn't necessarily talk about on social media. Like if you're a singer songwriter, but you're really into like, like mythical creatures or something, and then you, know, <laughs> you can start a podcast on that. And like, you know, and it's, there's going to be an audience for it. And then they buy into you as a person, then they might go and check out the rest of it. And this is how it leads to super fans. And then this is how it leads back to tipping and stickers and all that. Yeah, I think that's so. a great point, man, because if we want to get any indication of super fans, a large, pro- a good indicator probably is time spent. And if you have 50 people listening to your podcast religiously, that's probably a lot better than maybe even a thousand just listeners. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, they're the, they're the ones that are going to sustain you and support you in your career as the super fans, not, not the general listeners. Like, Yeah, like listeners to your music. So yeah, podcasts probably... Are, are far stronger pl- indications of that. So that could be a good way to start sifting through and seeing who that is. That's my-